UFC 306, O'Malley vs. Dwalish Wheelie, also billed as Noche UFC, took place on September 14th in front of a sold-out sphere in Las Vegas, Nevada. A one-of-a-kind event, it brought in a whopping $22 million at the gate and another $7 million more from ESPN's exclusive broadcasting contract, not to mention pay-per-view revenue in the tens of millions, sponsorships, and record-breaking merchandise sales. But how much of the pie did the fighters take home? The Nevada State Athletic Commission does not disclose fighter pay information, so while Venom sponsorship and fight bonuses are released, the purses I'll be showing in this video are just projections based on previously disclosed earnings. With that said, let's jump into the first fight. Every fighter that's under contract, if you want to tell the media what you're paid, that's up to you. Starting with the feature prelim, Irene Aldana kept the pressure on Norma Dumont, but was handily outstruck in the first round of their bantamweight bout. It was more of the same in the second, as Dumont maintained her output and continued to incorporate leg kicks into her attack. In the waning seconds of the round, a headbutt opened up a large cut on Aldana's forehead, contributing to the blood streaming down her face from an already bloody nose. Halfway through the final frame, Aldana had perhaps her best moments of the fight when she landed a nasty elbow on Dumont's nose, but it was no comparison to the damage she wore, and at the end of three rounds, Dumont would take the unanimous decision victory. Aldana made $80,000 to show and $11,000 in Venom sponsorship, also known as Fight Week Incentive, for a total of $91,000. While Dumont brought in $56,000 to show and $56,000 for the win, $6,000 in Venom sponsorship for $118,000 on the night. And now, kicking off the main card, Ode Osborne almost had an early night as he cracked and dropped Ronaldo Rodriguez with a strong right hand just seconds into the fight. Before Rodriguez had even cleared the cobwebs, he found himself in a tight triangle where he was nearly submitted. He somehow managed to survive and rode out the rest of the round on top. Apart from a guillotine attempt at the beginning of the second, Rodriguez dominated the round, landing devastating ground and pound and nearly securing a submission of his own. In the third, it appeared that Osborne had recovered and the round was exceptionally close. Both men had their moments, and the fight ended with Rodriguez on top. When the scorecards were read, it came down as a unanimous decision victory for Ronaldo Rodriguez. Osborne earned $55,000 to show and $6,000 in sponsorship pay and took home $61,000. While Rodriguez on his rookie contract made $12,000 to show and another $12,000 for the win, $4,000 in sponsorship, and a total of $28,000. In the second fight, Daniel Zellhuber and Esteban Rebovic traded heavy blows in the first two rounds of their lightweight bout. It was a high-level kickboxing match where both men had their moments, but the biggest came in the third round, starting when Zellhuber scored a knockdown off a vicious right hand. Rebovic recovered quickly, however, and returned fire with an insane combo that that had Zellhuber attempting to survive against the cage for nearly a minute. Seemingly no lack of cardio for both men, the ridiculous pace continued for the entire round, and the result was a split decision victory in favor of Esteban Rebovix. Zellhuber brought in $28,000 to show and $4,500 in sponsorship, along with a $50,000 fight of the night bonus, for $82,500 on the night. While Rebovix earned $25,000 to show and another $25,000 for the win, $4,500 in sponsorship, and his $50,000 bonus, for a total of $104,500. An insane first round kicked off the third fight as Diego Lopez stunned Brian Ortega with a well-timed right-hand left-hook combo within the first minute. Ortega appeared to be in real trouble as Lopez pursued his injured opponent, peppering him with shots as he pulled him to the ground. Somehow Ortega was able to survive, partly due to the threat of his elite level jiu-jitsu. In the second, Lopez continued to look sharper on the feet, but did appear to slow down a bit as the round went on. In the final round, Ortega's boxing looked much improved as his strikes started to hit their intended target, but it was Lopez who capped off the round with a left that again dropped T-City, delivering Lopez all three rounds on every judge's scorecard for the unanimous decision win. Ortega earned $140,000 to show and $11,000 in sponsorship pay, for a total of $151,000. And the winner Diego Lopez made $56,000 to show and another $56,000 for the win, $6,000 in Venom sponsorship, and a total of $118,000.
In the co-main event, the former champ Valentina Shevchenko looked sharp to start the opening frame, using her counters to keep the champion Alexa Grasso's boxing at bay and scored a takedown early in the round. Grasso threatened with arm bars and a guillotine, but ultimately Shevchenko would maintain the position and take the round. The second and third rounds played out very similarly, and while it wasn't the most exciting game plan, Shevchenko's successful takedowns and ground control put her firmly ahead on the scorecards. Apart from a scary guillotine early in the fourth round, bullets seemed to be executing flawlessly. The final round was likely the most competitive, however it was too little too late as Shevchenko would go on to regain her throne and take the unanimous decision victory. Grasso took home $500,000 guaranteed and $42,000 in sponsorship. And as female flyweights, and flyweights in general for that matter, typically do not receive pay-per-view points, even while defending champion, Grasso likely did not get a cut of the revenue. That brings her total to $542,000 on the night. While I'm estimating Shevchenko as a longtime former champion earned a champion's guaranteed 500k and 32,000 in sponsorship, putting her total at $532,000. If you're enjoying the content and want to keep up with all the latest videos, take a moment to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Only about 7% of the people watching this video are subscribers, but you can change that and help to grow the channel in the process. And finally, Marab Dwalishwili overthrew the reigning Bantamweight champion Suga Sean O'Malley. In the opening rounds, Marab did a good job of staying outside O'Malley's striking range before timing his takedowns perfectly, allowing him to rack up ground control and threaten submissions. O'Malley appeared to have dialed in his timing a bit in the third round and landed a few sharp right hands and a knee towards the end of the round. But whatever momentum Sean gained quickly dissipated in the fourth as Dwalishwili controlled him on the ground for the majority of the round while delivering serious damage. Likely down four rounds going into the fifth, O'Malley found some success with kicks up the middle and managed to hurt Marab in the final minutes. But Dwalish Wheelie survived the attack with one final takedown before the closing bell. Prior to the fight, Dwalish Wheelie talked about his journey to this championship bout. Um, uh, after 2020, a lot of things change. I, uh, I get more fights in UFC and I start making good money and I, I quit my job and I can full-time fight there and I moved to Vegas and man a lot of things change and I'm happy and I'm grateful grateful for UFC first because um, yeah I can sleep my own house and support uh, my family members my friends and inspire other people and because because of, um, I think I'm an example if I did they can do it too as for the now former champ Sugar Sean O'Malley, while his disclosed pay at UFC 292 was listed at 500,000, I've updated my estimates to account for the fact that most of the top echelon fighters, in terms of popularity, are making significantly more than their disclosed figures. For example, Israel Adesanya's last disclosed purse at UFC 263 was also listed at 500,000. However, best reporting suggests he makes four to five million dollars guaranteed, not including pay-per-view. So, as a conservative figure, at estimate that O'Malley made at least $1 million guaranteed, along with $42,000 in sponsorship pay. And while we can only speculate on the pay-per-view, I use a formula based on Eddie Alvarez and other fighters' publicly released pay structures from 2013 to 2016 and update it to account for new benchmarks and pay-per-view price increases to create a ballpark estimate. If we use 600,000 buys, O'Malley's cut falls somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.35 to 1.65 million, bringing his grand total to around $2.5 million. And the new undisputed UFC Bantamweight Champion Marab the Machine Dwalashwili received $350,000 guaranteed and $32,000 in Venom sponsorship, taking his total to an estimated $382,000. And while he most likely did not receive pay-per-view points, he will moving forward as the defending champion. That's all for this episode. Any corrections to the numbers I've shown will be listed in a pinned comment below. As always, thanks for watching. See you in two weeks for UFC Fight Night Moicano vs. Sandini.